It's that time again. It's the Berkey and the Badger board game battle show. It's going to get wild. It's going to get, it might even get a little zany. We're going to talk about the board game industry. And, you know, we might talk about anything else we want to talk about. Hey, hey, hey. It's the Berkey and Badger board game battle show. And I'm Berkey and... I'm Badger, and he's better known as Kevin Cheese is very hard in the fridge, Meyer. And Berkey, uh, Badger, Berry, Dublet, Dumb, 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 Giglet. No, no, that's not nice. Yeah, Dumb Giglet, that's the one. <laughs> I'll giggle at anything. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing fine, Chappy D. Choose. Wunderbar. It is early in the morning for you, I take it. Yes, the coffee is not working here. It is not good. Ah. It is not mm-hmm. a good Java. <laughs> well, I gotta us, tell you. We have someone. Go on, tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me. More, tell well, me more. Did it get very far? We, we have a very wonderful show today. In the neighborhood. Actually, we've got the amazing, the incredible Chaz Muller from Paradise Paradise. Yeah! Welcome, Chaz. <laughs> Hi. Oh, I'm- Hello, thank you for having me on. It's uh, exciting to be here. And I think this is the second time that I've, I've spoken with both of you on, on the thing. So thank you for allowing me to secretly start taking over your program. I appreciate oh. it. We are excited about you. Ooh. I didn't know my hands could make that noise. Can they do it again? <laughs> oh, oh, my fingers can't work fast enough. Oh, Google's playing up. Google's playing up. Well, hello. This is a very special podcast because it's a video podcast. If you watch the video, you can see us and hear us. And if you're just listening to us on a podcast, you can just hear us. And uh, the other good thing about this show is that it's live. So there's going to be lots of errors and lots of... It's live! And And we have technology to deal with. And we like to talk over each other, too. Yeah, we love doing that. We don't have time to edit in a future, in a future Badger, but um, <laughs> hey-ho, hey-ho. Well, and we are we do have this great big expanse called the Atlantic Ocean between us. Barry's in France, I'm in Minnesota, and the wonderful Chaz Marler is in Oregon, is that right? Or Washington? Yeah, or, no, Oregon, Oregon. Or, yep. all right. We managed... Managed to get as far away from each other as almost completely possible. So, if only one of us was in Hawaii, <laughs> then it would be really cool. Well, wow. when we were actually talking about putting together our schedule and stuff, I told my son Josiah about it, and uh, he goes, "Oh, I know exactly what you're dealing with. I used to play these memoir tournaments, and you have guys in France and guys in Germany, and then guys on the east and west coast, and you have the same problem scheduling." Uh, I think it was just a very wise decision for you both to just change your schedule to accommodate me. So that's, I think, what's really important to remember here is that we're we're working on my schedule, which is uh, always appreciated and expected at this point. So thank you. Well, that's what you have to do when you have stars. You have to cater to stars, so that's what we do. Even if they just (laughs) transport tripods around, it's it's, it's okay. We'll, We'll do that for you. Yeah. I think that, that star is a bit of a stretch. I, I think you're talking about making mistakes. I think you meant schlep instead of, of star. I think that's a little bit of a more accurate description there. <laughs> well, so, the thing I find that's really fun is, you know, when you can find three guys that have the same disorder as you, this is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Wise guy. This will end well. Sure. <laughs> Well, I think we should probably get on to the show here, but Barry, what you've been up to lately? Um, I have to look at what I've been up to lately, which is terrible, <laughs> but it is five in the morning. Um, I, uh, yeah, but there it is. Ugh, I didn't highlight it enough. Um, I, last week, I had my first gaming group 
in our community center, the Salle de Fête. Oh yeah, so, I heard you were doing this. I was really excited about this for you. And um, um, it's very laid back here. Um, I, I never saw the, the room um, and it was a case of just turning up in the night with the guy who has the key to the room and then just taking it from there. And um, the, the Salle de Fête is a beautiful, beautiful um, cell, cell, uh, room, sorry. Oh God, community center, sorry. I couldn't think of the word for the life of me. And um, it, it's just a, a lovely big place. And um, there was, a, um, on top of the big, there's three or four rooms. And there's like a big billiard room. And then these two other rooms, which are quite big as well. And um, one one's for a poker club. And then there was this other one with small, small, it was smaller than the poker one, but it was, it was, amicable and there was tables and chairs and I thought okay okay this is it and before I knew it there were people queuing up outside we had about 18 people turn oh, wow. up for your first yeah. one from my first one that's impressive so I, I knew most of them so um, that kind of helped um, and um, the room was a tiny bit a bit small for 18 people, unfortunately, but uh, everyone seemed to have a really good time. And I think that was obviously the most important thing is people had a good time and people commented afterwards and said, that was brilliant. Uh, when's the next one? And I'm like, ah. oh, it's not going to be for a little. We now have to do the paperwork. Um, it's creating an association here in France because it's, it, it's bureaucracy here. Everything's, you know, paperwork, you know, the paperwork for this. If you've ever seen um, the film Asterix, the, the 12 tasks of Asterix, um, there's, a, there's a scene where they, they take the mickey out of the bureaucracy, and it's, it's that. You've got to go to room 7A to get paper 9, 5, blue, and then go down to B, let's see, Mr. Sewing, um, uh, Propagation 55, and then... It's like that here, so, um, but, uh, yeah, so, um, it went really well, and people were looking forward to coming to the next one, and people that couldn't make the one that we had last week are going to be coming to the next one, so, it, fingers crossed, this is going to be something good. Well, I saw you had a really good lineup of games there, it looked like you had a lot of kind of entry-level type of gateway games and a couple little bit more medium weight. So it looked like they had a really good blend to offer people. Yeah, I, I didn't want to scare people away by having um, dissent and things like that. I wanted to keep, I wanted to keep the games, again, because I'm the one that's got to teach the games. And these are French people, and they speak French. So I have to, like, kind of teach oh, games. Oh, really? Are in, are in my vocab, you know, so... Um, basic uh, ticket to ride and the uh, survive um, I had viticulture because I know how to teach that because my job um, so yeah yeah everyone seemed to have a really good time Chaz, have you ever hosted a, have you hosted a, a board game group uh, evening like that before oh yeah um, <clears throat> we have uh, our at our community center here for the last year and a half or two years now I've been hosting a, a bi-weekly to three every three weeks type of game group um, we're on a little bit of a hiatus for the summer which is unfortunately also a little bit of a hiatus due to bureaucracy and, and paperwork uh, dealing with the city but I'm trying to get it back on track but we, we've had I think we've had at least 40 different meetings over so However long that is, every two, an average of two to three weeks, 40 times we've done. And it, it wow. took us, yeah, it, we average between nine to 19 people at ours. Well, but that's the, fantastic. The, yeah, the, the first few, though, uh, that's why I was so impressed with the number you had for your first one. I mean, the first few, we had maybe five show up. And the, the very first one was just me and another lady. And we did a jigsaw puzzle so it, it was <laughs> it was not the nice <laughs> explosive start that you had uh, you know I'm quite jealous of, of being able to get in there and, and play <laughs> take it to ride and, and survive and everything right off the bat that's that's really really envy I'm envious about that 
Yeah, and Kevin, yeah. Uh, it's a shame on you. You haven't seen Chaz's video where he, he shows you the room that he does the his board game event at and uh, all the things that goes on. I'm, I'm ashamed of you, Kevin. <laughs> I'm ashamed of you too, but for a completely different reason. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, hey, Barry, uh, before we keep moving on with that, uh, let's just do a quick uh, little bit of business here and we'll just continue on. But one of the things that we want to make you guys aware of is that uh, uh, so far we've been posting this show. This is our seventh episode on Barry's page. And we've actually uh, decided to put together our own uh, YouTube channel for the Berkey and Badger show, as we have done with our Facebook page. And hopefully we'll be able to have a, a little bit simpler place for you to come and, and catch us. Barry, do you have that information? Do you want to go through some of that? Yeah, I do. <coughs> <coughs> That's what I said about live television. I'm having breakfast now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dinner and a show, yeah. right? Hey, we've got our own board game breakfast show. Yeah, yeah, we've got our own... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm crunching on some pieces from Kemet here, as you can see behind me, with my friend Dr. Bunsen Honeydew. And um, no, um, <laughs> yeah, I've set up another channel on YouTube. It's basically called Berkey and Badger's Board Game Babble, and that's where we're going to be hosting all these videos. At the moment, of channel. The uh, what? What's my channel called? Back to the Brave. Oh, la, 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 la. The morning is hard. Next time, next time, it's... I'm doing it in the evening, and you're doing it in the morning, Berkey. I tell you. Um, All right. <laughs> yeah. So your T balance O power. T balance O power on Twitter is yeah. your uh, Twitter handle. And that's cool. Yeah. Let me curveball there. Yeah. So. Berkey and Badger's Board Game Babble has its own channel called Berkey and Badger's Board Game Babble on YouTube, which has well, its own YouTube channel. Berkey you're kind of breaking up a little bit there, Barry, but one thing we're going to do after we get the show uh, up, we're going to put in the show notes uh, some of the places that you can find us on social media, and uh, you'll be able to check us out at boardgametheater.com where we actually record this video live for you to view later, and we also create an audio podcast of it. And as we move forward, we're going to be improving that so this can be a full-fledged audio podcast with uh, edited audio. And so right now we're just doing the best that we can to use what we have and have some fun with it. But uh, those things are going to be coming forward. So uh, feel free to join us at BoardGameTheater.com um, or on our Facebook or on our Twitter channels. And one other quick thing is courtesy of Ben Hilliard from Daedalus Productions. I got to know Ben through a Kickstarter, actually. He makes wooden uh, game inserts. Uh, Ben's a really uh, a great, great guy. Uh, started a Kickstarter uh, here about, about six months ago or whatever, and he makes some really cool uh, uh, devices. He made us actually, made me a personalized deck box that I could carry my Star Realms in. Is that cool or what? Uh -huh. You see that? <laughs> well, Ben was so kind uh, to partner with us, and what he's done for those of you that are listening to board, to us at the Berkey and Badger Show is if you go to boardgametheater.com, you'll see that there's a promo code there called BGT15. BGT, Board Game Theater 15. That will give you a 15% off discount at the Daedalus Production, and also our good friend Robert Searing has uh, likewise a 15% discount. So if you want to trick out your games and get a really cool insert, uh, that's been made available courtesy of Daedalus Productions and Robert Searing insert here. Very good. And I'm selling CDs of Berkey and Badger music uh, for $500. Um, that's 200 euros. <laughs> Sorry. Just I want one. You want one. <laughs> well, if we sell enough of those, we can bring you to Dice Tower Con or Gen Con next year, right, Barry? Woo! <laughs> 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 
exciting. Shall we move on to things that make us go? <laughs> mm. <laughs> We're on to our news section. It's the news. Things that make us go, mmm, and make you go, mmm. Uh, things in the game world, world which make us go, mmm. So, Berkey, what's been making you go, mmm, apart from the fact that my voice is crackling up at your end? <laughs> <laughs> well, a uh, couple different things. I know there's a, one of the things that I noticed that was interesting, there was an announcement. Uh, that was made during Gen Con just before, but a Canadian company, F2Z Entertainment, which is the parent company of Z-Man Games, or Philosophia Editions and Pretzel Games, they announced that they have purchased a U.S. publisher. This U.S. Mm. publisher was none other than Plaid Hat Games. I'm going to read you the official uh, uh, word here. It says, Plat Hat Games will continue to operate as a design and development studio with the newly formed F2Z USA Corp, managing logistics, sales, marketing, and in a press release announced the deal. PHG studio manager Kobe Douch wrote, Plat Hat Games has always been a strong focus on the design and development process of making board games, and the skill set to set the team of Plat Hat Games reflects that focus. As Plat Hat Games has grown, the other aspect of the board game publishing business has devoured more and more of the team's time and attention. This acquisition by F2Z Entertainment allows that Plaid Hat Games team to turn their attention back to what they do best. Yeah. Wake up, Barry. Wake up. Uh, that was page one. What is page 15? <laughs> I got more pages. <laughs> So anyway, uh, it was kind of neat. You know, last year at BGGCon, I got uh, to talk to uh, Kobe a little bit, and he's such a nice man. And as I was talking to him, I said, so, you know, your games are so success successful and things are going so well for you. I said, how do you like managing the actual business side of it? And he looked at me, and he had this stare like the business side of it's just kind of sapping. I could just tell it was sapping all of his energy. And the man is really creative, but sometimes you get bogged down in logistics. And, and I think this is probably a fantastic direction for the company because they can have the people handle the business side of it really well, do what they do, and he can focus on the things that he does well. Mm. Yeah, uh, he is a very nice guy. And, yeah, I can imagine that he's probably weighed down by flying around to all these conventions, um, demoing his games, talking to people. Um, that is very tiring, isn't it, Chaz? I mean, you've been to Gen Con. How did you find four people carrying a tripod? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, I mean, it'll absolutely zap your energy, you know, quickly. And then, you know, you get, you get done with the first day, and it's so strange. You're both energized from the excitement of it and completely exhausted. And you realize, I got, you know, three more days of this to endure <laughs> And it's going to you know, be bittersweet because it's just, there's so much to see and do. But at the same time, you know, I forgot to eat lunch today because I was so excited. <laughs> so you, you just you run your body through the gamut doing it. And, you know, just, and I just went as you know, some schmo, uh, you know, help, helping out some, some people and, and talking to people. I can't imagine having to do all the logistics of managing a booth and the company behind it and all of that type of thing that would go along with it in addition to the carnival of the convention. Um, so I, I'm, hoping, <clears throat> I'm hoping that this acquisition helps him feel like for Plat Hat they can have a breath of fresh air creativ creatively, creatively thrown... Creatively. Uh, yeah, so that's a creative way of saying creatively. I like um, that way. Meta there, yeah. But I'm hoping it'll breathe some fresh air in, into them and help re-energize. Not that they, not that they were, you know, slacking by any means, but you know, no. it wears on you having to manage all that stuff. Well, they've sure had some hits, and they they know what they're doing. That's for sure. And uh, mm -hmm. I think this will only improve it even further, so that they can go to the next step. So I think it's really good. Yeah, it sounds like they they 
it sounds like this deal is good for them because it sounds like they're going to be able to focus on what they want to instead of the business stuff that they have to. And for you know a, a development company like that, uh, making creative properties, that's that can be really important to not have to worry about all of the the you know just bureaucracy stuff. So I'm I'm excited to see how how it kind of frees up their creativity. Yeah, exactly. So Barry, what have uh, what are some things in the news that are making you go hmm? Well, there's not much um, because uh, after, before Gen Con there were lots of things which were making me go hmm, but then they all got announced at Gen Con, so it was like oh yeah, I've heard this before. Um, the one thing that which has struck me is um, Cryptozoic have picked that will be making another Firefly game, which I think is. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> you think how many times um, there's been a game for Star Trek. Um, there's not been many Star Trek games that come out all at once, uh, but in the world of Firefly, there just seems to be like a bucket load of Firefly games just junking out onto the market. And the other thing is uh, Duck the Rights to do a game called Big Trouble in Little China based on the John Cole film of not chewing bubblegum and kicking thingy but oh, no, I can't remember a quilt a quote a quilt a quilt a quote I can't remember a quote yes I can yes no Jack Burton on the old pork chop express <laughs> yeah so I am super excited to hear about Big Trouble in Little China kind of legendary and also Firefly is interesting. I mean, what else can you do with Firefly? Yeah, Barry, you're kind of breaking up. We're both having a hard time hearing you there with your mic, so I'm not sure uh, what we're having issue with there. So you might want to check that, and Chaz and I can just talk here for a few moments. Yeah, there's nothing I can do, because if I switch off, we probably lose this whole um, thing. So um, you have to put up with Choppy Barry for <laughs> Sorry. Choppy Berry is one of my favorite berries. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not disappointed at all. I, it's a treat for me, really. <laughs> well, this is kind of funny because we had Robert Searing on, and uh, we had thunderstorms going through our place, and our, our internet wasn't working, so I was the one that couldn't get on the show much. <laughs> so yeah. there's always going to be one. So yeah, I don't know. May, maybe in twenty twenty more minutes, you know, maybe my house will explode or something. So <laughs> it'll be my turn. Well, I, there's a couple other things that I wanted to talk about related to. Uh, what's been going on and one of the things that uh, this is kind of our Gen Con show and post Gen Con show and while we were at Gen Con I got to really have some fun we were I was the sheriff of Nottingham and my daughter Maddie made this costume for the silk merchant and so we helped Arcane Wonders out for a couple days at their booth interacted with pe the people who were coming and playing the sheriff and we went around and handed out cards and just had a blast interacting with folks. It was so much fun. Uh, but we also entered the cosplay contest. This oh. was crazy. Yeah, we've never done it before. Have you ever done something like that before, Chaz? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I have a hard enough time just leaving the house dressed normal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, that, that, how did you do in the contest? Well, did we... we Go ahead. Oh, and were you in the parade, too? We did the parade. We had big fun in the parade. Most of the contestants, they wouldn't say anything, but I was, Greetings from the Sheriff of Nottingham! Huzzah! Huzzah! And people would, Huzzah! as we walked by, so we had them all going and having fun with it. Uh, but we've never done a cosplay contest, but my daughters have a professional company that they make dresses for Regency and Renaissance and things. Uh, so we got put in the professional category, oh. and this year was really remarkable. Uh, in the past, the, it wasn't quite to the level that it was this year, for sure. Uh, but the category was amazing. The one that won it was a 10-foot Sauron. And this I, I, I think I saw that guy. I, I think so. They were just 
the, the people with like the stilts and everything with their costume. Oh yes. Uh, mm-hmm. I should I, I should have had a picture ready for you, but it it was crazy. And there was this other gal. She was she had this huge dress with lights underneath it and these wings that fluttered along. And it and she rose up and down, and her ing, wings then would flutter as she rose. It was I mean hundreds and hundreds of hours. It was it was really remarkable. Wow, she she would actually ha- had some sort of pneumatic device or stilts or something where she would actually raise up taller as that. Oh, I wish I'd seen that one. That is amazing. It was really something, and uh, she won uh, runner up in the show, and uh, they came out at the end. Sauron and her, and Sauron was playing to the crowd, and and there were so many other ones that were really fantabulous as well. But if you want to see our little bit, you can go to the board game theater page. And I posted the little minute and a half thing that we did, and the crowd was loving us, but our costume just wasn't quite as spectacular as, you know, especially for you know you got to look at the costume pretty detailed up front to see what it is. So, yeah, yeah, wow, that that is that that though just to be surrounded with you know all of those people in character and in costume just to see that that group. Um, there were a couple of clusters of, of cosplayers. You know, they weren't the that great, but just you know the people that would put on a funny hat or makeup or something. But they were, cl- you know, they were gathering little clusters outside the exhibit hall, and just seeing them all together like that at that level was always really neat. Uh, seeing a, a group of them, so I, you know, I, I can't imagine how neat it was to have all of the professional level assembled like that. It must have just been almost like being on the set of a movie or something. Yeah, it really was, and there was, I mean, the crowd was packed. There must have been a 1,000 people that came in and watched it, so, you know, it was wow. about a two-hour show. There was 80 contestants, so wow. that was kind of interesting. Did they have each one individually kind of come out and, and show their costume? And... Yeah, they had they had uh, eight categories, actually, of different costumes. In fact, if we would have been in the board game category, the game category, I think we would have probably won that category. Uh, but there was other categories that were incredibly strong as well. So it was it was it was interesting to be a part of. You know, that's not really what we do, but we we liked horsing around and being on the stage. So yeah, excellent. <laughs> we uh, one other thing that we got to do. I tell you though, that I was in that costume for 14 hours, and my daughter Maddie oh. also over two days. Yeah. And yeah, and I thought they smelled I, I was bad melting. on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's insane. Uh, well, I know that it was really warm there too during the the convention. I mean, it must have been. There was a, an event, I believe it was on Wednesday, down at the zoo uh, for uh, Geek Chic. Oh. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It, it, I, it was I don't know, 417 degrees that day. Oh my goodness, uh, and I can't imagine being in that big costume that long because just going outside to the zoo or even walking to the hall, I had to change my shirt like three times a day. Uh, I actually went through all of my laundry by Friday and actually had to make an emergency laundry run just so I would have you know something clean to wear. <laughs> I couldn't believe how hot it was a couple of days. Was that well, I guess in the vendor the hall. Vest? <laughs> 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 Team Vest! Team Vest! <laughs> I, I tell you guys, if, you, if you're if you out there watching and you haven't seen Team Vest, um, did, have you published the third one already, Chaz? <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, I, I haven't yet. I'm working on it. I, I want to get it I want to get it done, you know, like yesterday. Um, but Marty Connell from Rolling Dice and Taking Names and I, yeah. you know, uh, went, we, we just walked, we had a couple of things kind of just lightly scripted. And then we walked around with the camera and kind of just, you know, improv some bits. And I was thinking that we got maybe 10 minutes of footage. And I, I, I brought it all home, was bringing it off the SD cards. And there was like almost 40 minutes. Uh, I tweeted <laughs> that there was 30. And right after I tweeted that, I found another SD card I'd forgotten about with 10 more minutes. So there's like 40 minutes of stuff for me to whittle down. So I'm trying to get it done as soon as possible while Gen Con is still relevant. But there's a bit more that we did than I thought of. <laughs> yeah, so that converts into about 20 hours of work, right? <laughs> but but working with Marty, it just the time flew by. <laughs> Oh, Marty, Marty. He's so wonderful and delicious. I'm like a moon I think they, pie. They call him Moon Pie. Moon Pie. 
<laughs> okay, I've got I've got some questions about Gen Con here, but I'm going to save them to the end. So uh, Paxton and Craig, if you want to hold on, mate, we'll ask you. I'll ask you questions to my, uh, my two American colleagues who were at Gen Con. Shall we move on? Yeah, it's time. Yeah, there was just a couple couple other quick little things that I wanted to mention too about Gen Con. One thing that we did that we haven't done before is we actually did some interviews with publishers. Mm -hmm. And we did an uh, interview with Brian Pope from Arcane Wonders. And that man, I just got to say, I, I've had the opportunity to meet him over about a year time now. And he's one of the most thoughtful, uh, kind men. He's just so considerate of everyone. Um, and when you meet him, you just see someone who has got his stuff together, and he's just he's just very articulate. And he shared with us some exclusive information. There's a new game that they're coming out with that they're not going to talk about, but he talked about it with me. So if you want to go watch it, you can go to Board Game Theater, and you can find out all about it. Some cool stuff. And then I got to also do an interview with Uwe Eichert. And you've got to say it right. Uwe. Uwe Eichert from Academy Games. Uwe, actually. Uwe. i got to say it right. Uwe. <laughs> yeah, you've got to say it right. <laughs> don't, don't say Uwe. He told me, he said, don't, he said, I already got enough problems with uh, sheep, so don't call me Uwe. <laughs> U-W-E. It's Uwe. And anyway, I did an interview with him, and they've done Freedom, the Underground Railroad, 1775. They just had a successful Kickstarter. They reached 40 stretch goals with their Mare Nostrum. Uh, mm. Fantastic mm. game. And uh, had a great time talking with him, so we did an interview with him. And then lastly, we did an interview with uh, an up-and-coming publisher, and I got to know them over a little bit of time, but it's April and Kevin Cox from K&N Games. And they just uh, started a game. It's a cooperative space game called Space Movers. Oh, yeah. And uh, he actually sent us a copy. He saw our first episode of, of Board Game Theater, and he said, hey, would you take a look at this? And we did. Uh, we got the opportunity as a family to play with him and his wife. And they told us their story. And this, the production of this game is really amazing. And it's a fun cooperative uh, game. But... Uh, really got an opportunity to spend some time with him, and uh, you're going to be seeing an interview coming from him pretty shortly, too. So this was kind of new for me, doing that kind of thing, and uh, we just had a lot of fun with that. Now, did you do some of that kind of interview stuff, Chaz? Oh, I didn't do person-to-person -person interviews. Um, I, I did more walking around, capturing kind of uh, the essence of Gen Con, uh, getting things that just stood out. Um, but I didn't actually have any sit-down interviews with, with anyone. Um, but e even doing just that, I mean, there was so much to see. It, it, it you know, it filled up um, you know, a lot of, of a lot of hours of footage. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, Barry, I think you're right. We can move on to our uh, next section here of the good, the bad, the not so bad, and the ugly. The good, the not so bad. Wait for it. <laughs> well, today's theme is the Muppets, and you can see right there that the ugly is on the screen. We've got old oh, Waldorf you. and Statler for the ugly. Now, they're not hey. really ugly, but look what they got to say. Oh, he's hey, got them. <laughs> That's awesome, Barry. Yes. You see that there? The <laughs> and then as the, the the good segment, Barry threw me for a loop with that one. What do we got for the good? This is who we got for the good. All right, D. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Let's do that. All right. Finding a thing. What's that? Finding a game boot and theme is like snuggling with a warm pea. So good. All right. Yes, <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> and then our 
our not so bad <laughs> segment <laughs> is represented by Miss Piggy. Not so bad. Not so bad. Dis-moi. Well, you can see our theme is the Muppets, and basically what this is is our rating system. We have three ratings. The good means that we love this game. We just think it's fantastic. The, the not so bad means that we think it's a great game. We think we would recommend it, you know, at least to try it, but probably recommend that you buy it, look at it. Um, but it might be something that we don't care for particularly, or it's not quite our style. Uh, the last, the ugly, is just a game that we hate and we really don't want to play. So that's our rating system. What you been playing, Barry? Well, uh, let me just load up my result like so, because I'm a cheater. I'm a cheater and load any pictures, because I've got the games in front of me. I have Kemet. Kemet is a combat game set in ancient Egypt. Um, whether the sound holds up, curse you, Windows 10! Um, where players <laughs> have... Um, armies of uh, minions of some sort um, and um, they have prayer points and the game revolves around using these prayer points to recruit more soldiers um, to use them to uh, lift the levels of your pyramid because your pyramids are little d4s and the more power you have in the pyramid the better powers you can buy and again you use the prayer points for buying these powers and you're basically attacking the other players to get victory points. There are several other ways to get victory points. There's, um, there are the, uh, the little, oh god, palaces. There's palaces of the other players. You can attack them um, and take over the, the their pyramids. And then you have these other things, I can't remember what they're called, um, they're like um, churches, Egyptian churches, where you, if you've got control uh, at the end of the turn, you actually get a temporary point. You can uh, leveling your pyramid to level four, you can, by sacrificing uh, your soldiers to get points, and there's all these ways of getting points, but the main way to get points, and the best way to get points is to attack the other players. You can't, like, sit on the fence um, and watch all the other players attack each other. You have to get in there yourself. Um, moving around is very simple. You can teleport. Again, you need to use prayer points, so you can jump from one side of the board to the other quite quickly, and otherwise it's just like moving, but even again, moving around the board can be pretty quick because these spaces are very vast, and it's just a nice traverse uh, to get to the other side. And so this game is just a combat game with some very nice artwork, some lovely little miniatures. There's also these um, big miniatures of things that you can buy with your prayer points. These are big monsters which have special powers which help you move faster or boost your uh, attack. And it all comes together very quickly. Uh, the games don't take much longer than an hour. Um, and it plays up to five players, so... There you go. That's Kemet, a game of Egyptian fighting. Mm. Ah. Have you guys so played this? What do you this? think, Chaz? Do you... <clears throat> I've played it. You played it, Chaz? Yes. Yes, I have. And it's. <clears throat> I, I I grew up on Risk, so uh, you know that type of area control game really has a, a special place in my heart. But Kemet takes that to a whole new level. Uh, and just uh, you know, blows everything else like that away. So I'm a big fan. Big fan. So what do you think? Uh, what do you think Barry rated it? Uh, not so bad, good, or ugly? I'm I'm I have a sneaking suspicion that my original prediction of uh, ugly and burn it in the trash. That's the only reason why he brought the box in was to burn it on camera. I'm thinking I may <laughs> have been a little bit wrong on that. Aha. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I was just a big setup, they are. Well, I I I think he's kind of messing with us, but I think <laughs> that he's going to say not so bad because I'm not sure if he's a big fan of area control and combat, which I don't mm -hmm. know if I'd categorize it that way. But this would be my guess on how he feels about it. What say you, Barry? 
Um, oh, I think I think that this guy he he, he might like this game. Um, but no, uh, what do I say? <clears throat> What's my response? Excuse me. <clears throat> well. I haven't played Risk like um, Chaz, and so I don't have a special place in my heart for area control, um, although I do have a, a space in my heart for combat. I like being in the mush out of some other player who sat over there, a handful of cards, thinking that they're going to win the game. This game is so open-ended because anyone can win. One moment, you could have, like nine of the ten points that you need to win the game and then someone comes along and goes to a temple that's the word i was searching for and then steals your temporary yep. token and then they level up a pyramid on their next turn and on the next turn they do this and by the end of the day phase they've won and not you uh, i think this game is quick fast fun thinkable but not too thinkable Thinky, whatever, and I'd say it was good. I like this game. I've played it a couple nah. of times, and um, I, I've enjoyed it. The only thing that I have with the game is because there's so many powers, it is very overwhelming when you first play because you, you can't really set up a strategy. You just have to just play and go, I'll, just, I'll take that one. Um, there, are, there are players I've taught this, and they're like, they'll spend a good five minutes at each turn thinking about what power they're going to buy and they look at the reference sheet and you're thinking, oh. but me, I'm just I'm one of these people that just picks up and buys. And I enjoyed the game because it, it did seem to move very quickly. And um, But that is my only niggle. Once I get used to these powers, this game should be a, a walk in the park. And again, playing with players that have played this game before, this game right. will rock, I think. Yeah, we had the opportunity to play this game at Dice Tower Con with Sean uh, from Dukes of Dice podcast. He's part of the mm -hmm. Dice Tower Network, and but it was we had five players. Two of the guys were from Canada that we had just met and had a great time playing with. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, Tony and Taylor, and uh, but we had an epic game. It was five of us, and it lasted a good five hours. So when you're wow. saying quick, I'm like, I mean, we it just went back and forth. Uh, with getting these points because we kept just it was it just kept revolving and there was a little bit of a learning curve so there was part of that but uh, nonetheless this game is fantastic <laughs> I mean it was awesome it was just the tension we're all standing up just oh so I love it I think it, it says something to the quality of the game uh, if you can be slogging through a five hour uh, edition of the game and still come out of that, you know, saying it's great and wanting to play it again. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. I, I, could, I could say that about Quantium, my first game of that, because the box says it's 30 minutes or 40 minutes. <laughs> or something like that. And my first game went on longer than uh, there was a game played next to me called, um, oh, what's the Dune retheming by Fantasy Flight? Uh, Rex? Oh, Rex. Rex. Yeah, there was a game. There was the game of Rex, and the guy playing Rex was teaching us Quantum, and they start their second game. By the time we'd finished our first game of of Quantum, uh, wow. Rex, <laughs> you know, for, Rex for, is for, not a quick game either. No, so we went well into the 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 almost the third hour playing Quantum, which is about thirty forty minute game. But I went out and bought it yeah, because yeah. I did really enjoy it. That's a mark of awesome. this game. Yeah, for sure. You've been playing Berkey. Berkey. Well, Berkey. I uh, this might this game might might uh, irritate a few people. Uh, the one that I'm going to show you because I was one of the lucky few who uh, took his uh, chubby little body and ran through the hall on the first day to get. <laughs> Not that anybody that else has a chubby video. body. But Oh yeah, baby! Another knot. This little guy can move. Here it is. <laughs> there it is. Can you see it in all its glory? It's no. blood rage. Oh, you're kidding me! You were able. You were one of like nine people that was able to score a copy of Blood Rage. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> yes, it. Uh, we had this opportunity to. I got in line right away, and there I was. So, but well, basically, in Blood Rage, it's kind of an interesting story. But we actually had to have we got to get have lunch 
uh, with Eric Lang at Dice Tower Con with uh, Richard Borg and with uh, Mike Fitzgerald. And it was amazing listening to these designers, but they were talking about some concepts. And Eric Lane had actually seen board game theater, and he goes, "Hey, I really like your show." <laughs> and I went, "Huh? <laughs> you really have seen my show?" <laughs> and he says, "You should do Blood Rage on board game theater." Well, Ooh. I was intrigued, and uh, so at Gen Con right away, I went up there to get that. Tom Basso's going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs over Blood Rage, you know. So um, I stood in line. I was able to get that. I actually got a signed copy from Eric as well. Uh, and we got it home after Gen Con, and my son and I sat down and played a two-player game. Uh, basically, what you're doing is, you know, uh, something is happening. There's three rounds, and at the end of each round, Ragnarok happens, where one of these territories is going to be uh, destroyed. And basically, you're these Vikings that are coming in there, and you're going to fight for glory, and you're going to try to take over these things by increasing your rage or increasing your axes, or you're going to increase your horns, which allows you to put more people on the board and fight. And there's little ships. Now, okay, this is the deal. Cool Mini or Not made this game. And it's not out to Kickstarter backers yet, but Cool Mini or Not, I mean, they've got it happening. When it comes to miniature games, uh, my hat is off to their production. They're, they're, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of giving away a little bit about how I feel about this, but these miniatures are fantastic. Uh, there's all kinds of little uh, uh, creatures that you can get on your side. Now, we played the two-player version, so we didn't have the Frost Giant and we didn't have the Flame Giant. Uh, in our game yet, and we're looking forward to playing it with two and or with three and four players. But we've played two games of it. I played another game of it this morning, and uh, it's it was simple to learn. Uh, the rules were well written, uh, easy to uh, handle and get to the table. It didn't take long to explain it. Uh, it wasn't that hard to understand the game mechanic, and yet there's so much complexity of what you can do that it, it, it was a little bit almost mind-boggling. The first game for me, I realized right away what I was doing wrong because I was playing with my very, very smart, my very, 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 very smart son. <laughs> what happened is at the end, uh, my head was stuck on a pole in Valhalla at the end of the first What's round. The tripod, no? But don't worry. <laughs> well, the good thing about Valhalla is after the first round, you can come back in the game. And then yeah. you can die again, and you can come back in the game. So that was pretty neat. What do you think I think about this thing? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, yeah. you didn't uh, sugar, you didn't sugarcoat it. So, yeah. I'm, but I'm gonna I'm gonna lean that you probably you probably thought it was pretty pretty good. That's just my stab in the dark. <laughs> yeah. Right. I think. That you were at Gen Con at the back of the queue, Jeriff of Nottingham cost you mom. Excuse the biscuit if it comes in your direction. And you were like, Make way for the sheriff! I come through first! And then you got to the front of the line and you <laughs> bought your game. You obviously, you obviously wanted this game. So I think that you'd like this game a lot. I think this is a good game for you. Well, I'm going to explain to you how, how I feel about this game. Okay, this is the way I feel about it. I'm going to use an analogy. Uh, has if any of you have listened to the Secret Cabal and listened to Jamie Peggy talk about Forbidden Stars, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Because yeah, Jamie awesome. Keggy, he's oh, he's awesome, and I got to talk to him a little bit the other day. That was cool. But you know, I love their show and. This man is so passionate about board games, and then he gets on the front, you know, it's got me jumping out of my pants, you know? <laughs> and he's so excited and so passionate, and he's talking about his forbidden stars, and I can't wait to play it. I, I want to play it right now. And when I got Blood Rage, I'm excited right now talking about how I'm excited. I mean, this <laughs> game is so flipping awesome. I mean, I, I want to go play it right now. Um I'm serious. Um, uh, we play two-player, but I can see as we do three-player and four-player how the dynamics are going to change. And 
as a two player it's kind of got it, it's a little more chess like because you can kind of gather what the other person's going to do but it's still full of of theme it's full of ah, I'm a viking and off with your head and <laughs> it's awesome uh oh we've Tom Vassal was right we we've lost him Chaz we've lost him he's gone <laughs> I love it in fact I if they went to the movie, but maybe I could teach my wife to play it. You think she'd get away with playing this game? I love it. So can you see it over there? It's right there. There it is. <laughs> yeah. There it is. You see that? It's awesome. It's signed by Eric Lang. I, I can hear Eric Lang talk to me as I play it. Okay. One of the lords of Canada have spoken. <laughs> <laughs> so what else did you been playing, Barry? <laughs> Marco Polo, a game which someone said was fantastic. And so uh, when I saw it in the shop and uh, I picked it up, it's a... Who, who, was, who was that? Hmm? The French? Um, was that a Frenchman that told you that? No, no, no. It was another big oui, oui. gentleman with glasses. I'm growing a beard, I'm growing a beard. And I'm going to wear glasses one day. I miss... <laughs> no, um, Marco Polo. Marco Polo. The Voyages of Marco Polo is a Euro game. You have each player has five dice, which they roll, and then they use these dice as workers to assign to different jobs. Um, and then your board is made up of two sections. There's a map where you have a trader, and then at the bottom you have all the options you can use your dice for. So, like, you could use like, some money, or you could use a dice to get some goods, like camels or gold. Um, and depending on the value of the dice, that will determine uh, what kind of goods you get or how many of those goods you get. You also have a space for moving your merchant around, and you've got to use dice to make your merchant move. And then as your merchant moves around the board, they, they set up stands in different... And these, at the end of the day, you get kind of these little cards which tell you which cities you need to visit to get bonus points. Uh, and that's when the big game becomes a point salad, kind of, with a vinaigrette of some sort. And um, you're collecting goods all the time with these dice, and then you're moving around the board and go open up new stands, new shops, you know, like a new new Apple store there in, in Alexandre, and uh, an Apple store maybe... And you're getting bonuses from these sitting up options for where to place your dice. So you can go to one city which you've got a stand at, and you can use your dice there to transfer your camels into victory points. And the game plays over five rounds. Uh, so you roll the dice five times, and then you allocate the dice five times in the game. Um, there's ways of getting other dice. There's ways of re-rolling your dice. So you can Roles. There are ways of, well, each person takes on a, a character, and each character has these powers, but they're not like light powers, like you'd say, get in Colt Express, where, you know, you can shoot and knock someone back. But this is, these are really strong powers. I mean, excuse me, I thought the game was overloaded with these powers. When I first played it, I was like, wait a minute, you're telling me that my character can choose whatever number he doesn't even have to roll with them. Or you're telling me that every time I get an extra dice and I get a contract which will give me victory points if I fill it. And it's like, wow, big powers. So this game is a, um, it's a trading in the somewhere on the world game where you're getting goods and then selling them to fill contracts, and hopefully you'll win after five rounds, hopefully. And lots of ways to get points. Big game. Lots of ways. All right, so Chaz, what do you think? Have you played Marco Polo? I, <clears throat> I haven't, but I did hear that same thing about it, about the powers, uh, thinking, oh man, this power is 
is oh this ability is overpowered. Then you see the next ability. Oh no, that one's just as overpowered. And and that one, these are all amazing. I, I heard that same opinion about it. So I'm really interested to see how those work in because something that powerful while keeping it balanced would be really interesting to see how how they manage to pull that off. As for Barry's opinion on it, oh, this is tough. I mean, I'm I'm. See, I'm, I'm, you pushed the bar so high raving about Blood Rage. Every other game now just sounds like, you know, garbage. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that, that Barry's opinion is probably not so bad. Just, just because I got the whole Blood Rage tainting my, my opinions <laughs> now. But, so I'm going in the middle there. Well, I, I, and I played uh, this game at Dice Tower Con and uh, played it with a couple guys from Canada and we had a really fantastic time playing the game and I had that exact same experience when I saw those players come out I was the mercantor and I got a good every time somebody went to get goods and I was like I'm gonna win, I'm gonna win and then the next guy got the <laughs> <laughs> and the next guy he got the thing where he could travel free and next guy got the one that he didn't have to roll dice he could pick him with whatever he wanted to do and I was like what? <laughs> and and you, you think it's broken, but it just worked. I've seen it won both ways in three different games. I've seen different people win the game. Um, I just love the game, and I was actually the one that, that told Barry how much I loved it. So uh, it's my kind of game anyway. Um, I think Barry likes it too, so I'm going to say good. Mm. Well, yeah, the, the game, the components are very nice. I the camels and the gold. I don't have to upgrade this game like I did with Agricola because all the pieces are perfectly cut to the shape that you want them to be so you know what they are. Um, the dice are wood. Yeah. It's rolling dice and moving them around. Kind of Kingsburg style superpowers. super powers. You know what? This this game is just, just uh, enjoyable. <laughs> it is a good game. <laughs> I... <laughs> Yay! Sorry, Chaz. I didn't lead you wrong, huh? No, you didn't lead me wrong. It was it was enjoyable. Um, in fact, it wasn't you that told me it was. <laughs> 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 Sorry, so after watching his review with Sam, I was like, that sounds like my type of game. That sounds like a game that I could probably play with the wife, and it was. And she kind of enjoys it as well. It kind of, it kind of has a feel of um, Metro Culturia, which is um, Rococo for you. You know, the dressmaking oh, game. Yeah. It feels Love like that. that. There's, just, there's just so many things that you can do. You're just overwhelmed with the option. And that's good in a game because you don't want to feel that you have to go to step one before you can go to step two, before you can go to step three. You like to feel that there's... Um, I'm going to try this way. Oh, my power is this, so it's probably best if I do that. But having this big range of um, routes to go down is, is just makes the game so playable and so replayable. These, these city power cards change all the time. There's just so much in this game. It is wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so glad you like it. Uh, I really thought it was a great game, too. Well, I've got one other game that uh, we've been playing, and uh, we actually uh, were able to play this at Gen Con uh, one of the evenings, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about Gen Con later and all of that, but uh, this was one game that we played a three-player game of, and this is the game right here. This is the game El Gaucho from Passport Games. And uh, I had heard a lot about this game, actually. You can see in the picture here, there's a little corral there that you get to throw your dice in. Uh, and basically what you're doing is you're trying to gather these different uh, varieties, these different breeds of cows. And it's kind of interesting. The tiles are pretty, are very nicely made, actually. I don't know if you can see that there. There's one of the cows. Here's the black Angus cow. Mm -hmm. Here's a... A brown cow that's like a Jersey cow. I believe there's five different sets of cows, and they all have different numbers on these cows. So there's kind of an interesting 
<laughs> I said moo. I said moo. <laughs> Ah, uh, I love cows. So anyway, there's a, a unique mechanism with this game where it's kind of set collection, but if you choose, let's say you get a 12, and then you get a 10, that means you're going in descending order, and you have to continue to get them in descending order. But there's also a worker placement aspect to the game where you can modify that by inserting something in the middle of your run. The more that you get, the more... And the, the longer of a run of them you get, the more it multiplies when you sell these cows. Uh, one of the interesting things about the game is that it's a very high scoring game. Most of the games will go over 200 points. And so it's very interesting how that happens. You can also actually rustle cows from your opponents. Uh, there's some really, really interesting little uh, dice aspect uh, that you can do certain things on the lower dice, one through three. And uh, likewise with the higher dice are a little harder to get, but they give you special features. Uh, it's kind of a light to medium weight game. I, I wouldn't categorize it as family lightweight gateway, but it's easy enough to teach that you could probably bring it out like that. But there's a lot of decisions. There's a lot of choices to be made. Uh, what do you think I have to say about that? <laughs> have you played that, Chaz? I haven't played that one. It, it looks interesting, but I, I have figured out your system. I can see over your shoulder there, on top of Blood Rage. I can see. I believe it's the box for El Gaucho. Blood Rage! I love Blood so, Rage. If I told you how much I love Blood Rage, I want to play see, it right now. But see, yeah. I see. I see you have the box for El Gaucho actually on top of Blood Rage's box. So, ergo, you must actually love El Gaucho even more than Blood Rage. So, I'm, I'm going to think two things. One, you're going to say that ye, the uh, El Gaucho is the good. The second, you like it so much more than Blood Rage, you're probably at this point willing to give me your copy of Blood Rage. So, those, those are my... <laughs> I think they're both fair. So, yeah, it works out. Wow, very interesting. Um, yes and no, Chaz. <laughs> <laughs> so close. <laughs> Barry, what do you have to say? <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the fact that one you like cheese. I like French cheese. No, it's Chinese. That one. Sorry, wrong song. Um, so, uh, the fact, yeah, I was going to say the same as Chaz. The fact that you've got it in the background um, <laughs> is a good indication that you either love this game because everything is awesome, or it's um, it's not too bad because of the family friendliness, and, or maybe you just like the tiles and you're thinking of changing your bathroom um, arrangement by adding these <laughs> cows into the like a border. Um, so I'm going to go well, with. I'm, Go with. I'm going to go with. I think it's good. I think it's good. Well, again, I'm going to use a, another uh, aphorism, if you will, from Jamie Keggy. <laughs> Their statement at the Secret Cabal is uh, striving lest we become cowardly manure. <laughs> I love manure. Cow manure. So, what does that mean? Do you like it, it or not? <laughs> um, I love it. <laughs> it's good, man. I grew up on a farm, guys. Right. I grew up on a farm out in North Dakota, and I had my own horses, and we had cows, and so I'm very familiar with ranching. Uh, so it, the it, the theme appealed to me. But uh, like you said, Barry, I think you pegged it right. Uh, I love family weight games. I love to play these kind of games that aren't so complex that it's hard for me to teach the family. I like complex games myself, but those aren't the games that I can always bring to the table with my family. And uh, this game was just very easy for us to pick up. My daughter Maddie loved it immediately. I'm going over to their house in Alexandria uh, next week on Wednesday, and uh, we're having game night, and we're playing El Gaucho. Uh, Passport Games, um, I don't know if you've watched some of the titles that they have, but they have Exodus, 
uh, Proxima Centauri, I believe it's called, with the new expansion, Age of Extinction. Uh, they've got a, a really strong stable of games. And so I was intrigued just because they were behind it. They did Praetor. Um, but the tiles in this game are well produced. The game board is really nice. The kind of the cartoony artwork is it's fun. It makes you think it's really light, but there's so many choices. And I could play the replayability for me. I think we could just play this and play this and play this. You're never going to have the same game. And uh, I loved it. I thought it was great. So it's good for me. Highly recommend. Go and get it. You guys won. <laughs> Woohoo! Woohoo! Well, speaking to speaking of guests. winning, yeah. we've got a game with our special guest, Chaz Marler! Yay! This is the way our game works. Hi. Oh, very. Over to you, Kevin. Do you want to explain the game? Yeah. Well, basically, what's going to happen in our in our game with uh, Chaz is there's three parts to the game. The first question we're going to ask Chaz is, what was the last game that you purchased? And what we're going to be able to do is we're going to ask five questions each, and we're going to be able to uh, guess, try to guess what that game is. I think the music's been there. <laughs> be before, we get, before we start with this, I'm going to give you guys just a fighting chance. I will okay. let you know the most recent game that I purchased was not at a thrift store. So it's not one of those. It's not ah. like jury duty the game or something like that. It's an actual le legitimate mainstream current title, so it's it's not going to be some weird, crazy goodwill find. So you uh, already have you already have the advantage in your favor. I just feel like the weight of the world came off of my shoulders because I thought you were going to do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I do what I can. I give. So, yeah. Well, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be a lot of fun. So part one, we're going to do this where we get to ask you questions. We're going to try to guess them. Part two, uh, we're going to talk about the game that you're most excited about getting, and you're going to have to draw for us a picture of it, and we're going to have to explain that and try to get it. And then part three is we're going to guess what your favorite game is, and you get to give us one five, five one-word clues, and we get to guess after each one, but your goal is to stump us. So if we, you can't use a word from the game, and you can't use the designer's name. So oh, don't if we worry. don't get it. I, I have five incredibly horrible clues already. So I, I'm planning this oh. for <laughs> Barry, he's prepared. Blood Rage! <laughs> We're going to send you to Valhalla! <laughs> I'm already there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on to question one. Chaz, yes. what was the last game you purchased? Barry, do you have a question for Chaz? Did you purchase this game at Gen Con? Ooh, you're narrowing it down really quick. Oh, Did I purchase this game, game at Gen Con? Yes. <laughs> Blood Rain! Probably a, a 2015 release, Donk. Here we go. Oh, you meant Gen Con this year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what other year did you go? That's, that's the question. What other right, year? No, this was this this was my first Gen Con. So yes, it was it was it was last week. Back when I was in Wisconsin. <laughs> uh, do you have a guess there, Barry? 2015 games. I'm going to go with uh, Elysium. No. No. <laughs> no. Okay. I got the question. This is 
This is a really good question. I know it is. I can just feel that this is a good blood rage. <laughs> so, I think uh, is is this game twenty dollars and under? I believe it is over twenty dollars. Again, I bought it at Gen Con, so. Buying it at Gen Con, yeah, it had to be over twenty dollars. <laughs> now we are now that's that's not totally fair. I mean, in the price of the game, are we calculating in you know the airfare and hotel and everything going to Gen Con? I mean, because that way we're not. This is a seven hundred dollar game, so <laughs> your question might be a little skewed. Oh, okay, great. Okay, well, no, it narrows it down for me because I was thinking particularly the game by by Czech Games Code Names was twenty dollars. Oh my goodness, no. Codenames, my favorite game of the convention, and but I went there every day they were sold out. They had some pre-orders, but they were like, come back to our booth first thing tomorrow morning. We'll have some. And I would go there the first thing, they were already sold out every day. Super hot game. That, well, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to uh, give you any clues about, about the, the answer to this question, but that was the um, one Keep of the talking. two... One of the two talks of the of the convention, code names and another game, where where everyone was playing and talking about those games. Uh, and by the way, love code names. Cannot wait to get my own copy of it, but I, not I, not the one I bought. I I bought two. You bought two code names. Two. You utter creep. <laughs> you got got one to keep in your blood rage box or something. You just hey look. <laughs> I surrounded my blood rage with code names. I have a code um, for my blood rage. Okay. <laughs> I'll just keep so. this code names here. You know, I'll keep this by my bed. You know, okay. so it'd be the last thing I look okay. at. I'm not gonna play it. It's just a centerpiece now. Well, right. okay. So it's not code names, but I still get a guess, and I think I know what it is. I think it's Mysterium. No. no! Not Mysterium. <laughs> Barry, I, I think it's your turn. I think I broke Kevin. So. Yeah, I think you did as well. Um, I've got no responses from our viewers. Nobody seems to have guessed. Like last time when we had Susan on, someone got the, the answer correct. I'm going to ask you then, Jazz, is this game based on a license? Ooh! Good question. <laughs> and when I say license, I mean your film. Okay. I got an answer for you. Good no, question. it is not based on a license, but at one time during its development, it almost was. Oh. <laughs> that means nothing out to me. Well, to make it a little bit even trickier, I may have been lying, and the game may actually be Elysium. So I'll just throw that out there to make it a little more difficult for you. <laughs> It's a lot easier if you just lie, but no, no, it not based on the license, but at one point it almost was. I haven't got a clue. But Barry, he told us it was one of the hits of Gen Con. Okay. And I didn't say that. I didn't say it was one of the hits of Gen Con. I said there was another game who I'm not going to mention because I didn't want to give you any clues. But that was not necessarily this game. I can Again, swear I said he said something about it was one of the big hits of Gen Con that they were talking about. Jazz, right? Yeah. Now, again, lying, so, you know, <laughs> <laughs> keeping you on your toes. <laughs> it's not All right, Barry. Service. No, it is not room service. Okay. So, Chaz, yeah. does this game have a dexterity element to it? I'm going to say no, because dexterity is definitely not required in order to play the game better. So, no, it does not. It's not required to play the game better. So, maybe it's like the version of a ticket to ride where you've got to stack your train. That's what people do when they're playing tickets to ride. Um, okay. Let's see if we can narrow this down. Is this game... Um, a party game. Oh, did 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 Kevin have a guess, or 
Yeah, oh, I get oh, a yeah. guess, Barry. Sorry, mate. So. Just hold I your don't... horses. Hold your cows. <laughs> hold your cows. <laughs> I mean, it's your guys' game, so I thought maybe the rules changed or something. No, but... no, no. Barry, yeah, the rules. get some more coffee. Um, I, I, I do want to have a guess, because I want to say then, would it happen to be Champions of Midgard? <gasps> no. <laughs> all right. Okay. Mm. So, all right. Is it a party game? A party game? No. I do not believe it would be classified as a party game. Okay. Mm. Man. I don't know. Is it New York 01? Pardon? Is it New York 1901? Oh, no, it is not. Ah! Heard a lot of buzz about that game, though, too. Uh, so I wanted to play that game so bad, and they were booked up at the table, and then we were doing our gig and didn't get to, didn't yeah. get, to get over there. And ah. Yeah, that one seems very popular. But not popular enough to be the most recent game that I purchased. Purchased. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So is this your third question, Mr. Kevin? Uh, is this my third question? Yes. Or this will be my. This will be my third. Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm keeping track on you guys. I'm not going to let you get away with the extra questions. Dad, gum it! I got a question coming up here. Dad, gum it! All right. Have we lost Kevin? I'm not sure. You can you still hear me? I can hear well? you, Chaz. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. We've lost Kevin. Okay. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps he's just lost perhaps in deep thought. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he looks like he is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's a stumper. Mm. I'll ask my fourth question. Then. <coughs> Excellent. Excellent plan. Okay. Perhaps okay. he'll... He'll come back. Okay. Is this game primarily made of cards? Ooh. Ooh. Don't do that. Please don't do I want... torture me. <laughs> do I want to give you a helpful answer? No, I do not. I, I don't. Even, no, it is not primarily cards. Not primarily cards. You could not. Yep. Yep. So there probably are some cards involved, but it's not primarily cards. So that rules out Dominion, and that rules out Ashes of the Thingy Bobby. Yeah. No. Bobby. Now your 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 question. Now just your question was. You have said, is it primarily cards? So I'm answering no, it is not primarily cards. I'm not, the, the extra clue I was considering telling you was how many cards the game has. But no, I'm not going to tell you how many it has. I'm just going to answer your question. And I'm going to answer it in such a way to confuse you as much as possible. I'm not going to do this too while I answer it. Yeah, Distract you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gonna, How's that feel? I thought, I, I thought you'd get a rap to me. I was going to get really scared. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, Barry, the cards are primary. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I'll, I'll tell you, she's Rise of the Phoenix Born then. And I will say no. It's not. Okay. I am running out of things. It's not Mysterium. Okay. Okay. Um, is it a com a war game? Is it a war game? Last, last question. No, it is. I I I'm confident in saying it is not what would qualify as a traditional war game. Well, I'm I'm, I'm not aiming for traditional, but you know, a game where there's a lot of conflict. <laughs> Well, that's uh, well. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask the judges. Okay, and the ju judges are giving me the nod. I'm, I'm just going to answer your original question. And no, okay. I, I, not a war <laughs> game. You're a tease. You are a man. I'm a jerk. 
<laughs> um, oh God. Is Mr. Burkhard Schmeier there? Coming ground control to major. Wow, I don't know what happened there. Am I back? Hello. Hey, you're back. I missed you so much. <laughs> you never sent a postcard. <laughs> Are you still there? Or are you still thinking? I'm still here. <laughs> He's still thinking. <laughs> we, I, we I will do a recap. Oh, yes. I will do a recap. I've asked two other questions. I've asked, is, is this game primarily made of cards? Chaz is setting me near. It's not primarily cards. Cards were actually in the game. And then he did that ow, nasty thing. I just also asked him, is this game a war game? And what I meant by that was combat game. But he said, no, no, I'm taking you by war. So it's not a war game. But it's probably a combat game. Ground control, Major Berkey. I again. didn't hear you, sorry. Give, okay. give it to me. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you hear the Chaz version. Ali Chaz. Not primarily card game, and not a war game. Not primarily a card game. That was his question. Is it primarily a card game? I said no, and then he said, "Is it a war game?" And I laughed at him, teased him a little bit. Told him I missed you, and then I said no. <laughs> he is evil. Evil with the capital uh, E. <laughs> Did you make any guesses, Barry? Um, oh, Barry I still went... has a last guess to make. Oh, have I? Oh. And I, I still have two questions, right? Yeah. Yes. Barry guessed Ashes. Yeah. And that is incorrect. And for the war question, war game question, he has not made a guess yet. Okay. Uh, he's gone. He's gone with the wind. He's clear. It's me. I'm Kathy. I'm come on now. Oh, what did you buy? Oh, you bought El Grande. The, no, no, you didn't buy El Grande. I think you bought. Um, <laughs> I think I'm stabbing the dark here because I'm jealous. I, but I think you bought TV's expansion. I did purchase the Takenoko Chibi's expansion, but it was not the most recent game that I purchased. <laughs> so close. So close. Ah, that's so clue, close. That's a clue in itself. Yes. Because you might have bought something on the way out. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I, so, bought a, I bought a pack uh, of cards at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, was it a Euro game? No. I do no. not believe this would be considered a Euro game. Okay, hang on one second. Leave me hang the telephone. Don't, 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 don't leave me hang on the telephone. I'm awake now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Coffee has hit you. Okay, here we are. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with our internet tonight. Uh, all right. Uh, well, it's not a Euro game, so I'm going to guess that you got uh, the new Stronghold Games uh, Space Attack, Space in, uh, like Survive. I think it's called Space Attack. Mm, there's no cards in that. <clears throat> You're right! That's what it is! Yeah. Really? Survive Space Attack. Yes, <laughs> that is the game I got. Oh, darn. If we got all the way to the end, I was going to pretend that it actually was Elysium. But, uh, yes, I I was so on the fence about this game because I, I love Survive. It's a great, vicious little game. And when I heard about Survive Space Attack, I, I was like, you know, you know, it's a reimagining of the traditional Survive. And I was mm -hmm. like, my thought was, do we need this game? 
is there actually a niche here that this for this game to fill? And I was fortunate enough, uh, through serendipity, uh, I was manning the Dice Tower booth one of the hours at Gen Con with Jeff Engelstein, who, of course, you know, is, is him and his family designed the game. Right, right. And so I actually was talking to him, and it came, you know, the game came up, and, and I wasn't planning on, on buying it. I was planning on waiting and seeing. And so I, I asked him that question. I, I bluntly asked, you know, why? Why? What was the deciding factor to actually reimagine this? Because Survive is such a strong game on his own. On its own, and he actually laughed and and said that yeah, it kind of started out almost as a joke, you know, just in a conversation to someone like two years ago, and then a couple weeks later they contacted him and said, you know what? Would you like to flesh that idea out? <laughs> really? Okay. And so at one point, um, like I mentioned the license thing, I guess at one point it was actually going to use the uh, Star Wars license and you were going to be escaping the exploding Death Star. Oh. Uh, but of course, you know, licensing and stuff like that, that didn't pan out for one reason or another. Right. And I, I think they probably have a stronger game actually with what they came up with. But what... Jeff mentioned is that the people that are left on the space station, or you know, the equivalent of the island as it's disintegrating, in the original Survive, you get to a point, the end game, where the people stuck on the island, you know they're never going to get off. And the last few turns can be kind of this wasted, just watching the island disintegrate with your people stranded. Oh. Well, with the, the space attack version, they added turrets um, that can shoot aliens that are on the the space station that's disintegrating, and those are the last spaces to go away. So you have these turrets that can be shooting aliens to clear a path to get your guys off, and also they added these little fighter ships that can go uh, for one movement point as far as you want in a straight line. So if you get one of those little fighter ships, you can even the last turns get your guys off that island, off that little space station. Anyway, what he said about it made it sound so intriguing that after, uh, on the way out, I was like, dang it, I gotta go get it. So I grabbed a copy of it, totally last, you know, spur of the moment, the last thing on the way out, I went and I swung by Stronghold, grabbed a copy of it, and I'm glad I did, because I think that it is actually going to retire Normal Survive for me. Because uh, oh, you can wow. play... You, you know, you can play traditionally if you want to, but then it has the added things. Oh, and the little tiles that come up, um, you know, the special abilities that are hidden under the tiles are new and different as well. And I think they're a little more engaging than some of the uh, older traditional ones. So, yeah, I, I, I'm really glad that I let the designer of the game talk me into getting it. <laughs> and he wasn't, just, he wasn't just giving me a snow job about it. It actually is really good. It was the actual awesome. coin trick. Mm. <laughs> well, that was it. Was kind of one of my uh, regrets of Gen Con. There was there was a couple things that I regretted. One was that I didn't get to play or pick up ni uh, New York 1901. That was one I was really looking forward to. And the other one was I didn't get by the Stronghold booth. Uh, mm. We were so busy doing interviews and and then with the Sheriff of Nottingham stuff, uh, we went over there and it was full and we didn't get to play. And I uh, really wanted to try Lagania and uh, the Survive game, so I'm glad you really liked it. Yes. I, I played it with the family just yesterday, and it was like we were playing it because we play Survive a lot, and we were playing it. It's like, this is different enough that it stands on its own, and you know, it, it, it was really a pleasant surprise. So I, I, I recommend it. Um, That's at least awesome. Give it a try. Yeah. Yeah, Stronghold <laughs> Games, they know how to do it. <laughs> but I guessed it. Blood Rage! Okay. Part two. <laughs> is the question is, Chaz, what game are you most excited about getting? And he's got his Sharpie, and he's going to draw for us. And Barry, you and I are going to describe to the audience as you show it to them on the screen what he's drawing. You've got 30 seconds, Chaz. What? To no draw. one told me this was going to be timed. Uh, that's too bad. <laughs> okay. That's about, there's, a, so, there's a time delay yeah. between us and you, okay, so that you probably have like an extra two seconds or something extra. Yeah, you only got 20 seconds left. Uh, don't <laughs> We're on expert mode, okay. <laughs> yeah, Barry, I wonder if he, this guy really knows how to draw. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I, uh, I've got an impression he doesn't know how to cut out clouds properly. That one looks a bit um, oversized behind him there. It should be like a north. Uh, a north 
think maybe you should figure out a good heckle or something. Something we can heckle with him. Best I can. Call that sky blue. I don't call that sky blue. Yeah, what are those clouds made of anyway? <laughs> Popcorn. We're not I'm not being you. distracted. I'm not being Blood distracted. Blood rage! Blood rage! <laughs> I didn't know what he's excited about. Just for that, I'm using, I'm using mixed media here. I'm gonna, I'm using some pen, <laughs> I'm using some pencils for some shading. Uh, You're chewing the end of it off too, aren't you? I, yeah, I messed up a little bit here though. But okay, I think I'm, I think I'm as far as I'm gonna get. He's as far as he's gonna get, folks. Oh wait, wait. Well, oh wait. Now he's I mean, putting this time off. He's How much time? Buying time. I'm uh, gonna. I'm going to milk this for all it is. You lose, you lose 10 points for every second you're behind right now, and you're 10 seconds behind. Really? Wow. Like 15. Well, 15 okay. now, but to go 20 now, 30 right. now, all right, all right, now right. to go 5. All right. This isn't the... I mean, you know, the video is going to be awesome enough watching a guy draw on his desk. The I cannot even wait to hear how awesome this will translate to your audio version of this podcast. Awesome, awesome. You can, you can hear, really hear the scribbling. All right, so <laughs> what, we, what we have here, okay, I'm going to... Oh, okay, there's a guy laying in a bed, mm -hmm. and he's snoring, sees. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, there's a ghost. There is a and spooky a, ghost. And he's got cards, and mm -hmm. he's... He's trying to get something to the man that's sleeping. Nice shading. Thank you. That thank you. That's my that's my art degree at work right there. You know. Mm, a nice pillow. It looks soft and comfy. Yeah, I, I really tried to you know imbue it with uh, pillowiness. And so. nice nose. Nice hair too. To sleep. Doesn't look like he's even been sleeping. No, no. He he took a shower before bed. So you know. Barry, the ghost looks kind of angry, though, but he's trying to get something to him. I think I know what this is. Do you know what it is, Barry? I think it's ghost humanity. What? Ghosts against humanity. Ghosts against humanity? It's not, it's not cards. Okay. So it's not ghosts cards against humanity. It's ghosts against humanity. He's angry at the human. Okay, no, that's actually a manatee. So it's ghosts against a manatee. No. Oh, a manatee. <laughs> it's a big fin. Uh, what do you think, Barry? You got a guess? Yes, I'm trying to think what it's called in English, though. That's the thing. It's, um, it's a small children's game, uh, bizarre, something or other, um, where you've got... No, no, you would have drawn the shapes then, wouldn't you? You would have drawn the sofa and the, the, the mouse and the... No, I'm blank. I, I think I'm going to make a guess. I'm going to say it's Mysterium. Woohoo! Oh. Yes. It is. Actually, it's Elysium again. No, no, it's, yes, it's, it's Mysterium there with the little, little ghost and the... There you go. We actually got to play the new version at Gen Con uh, with all the new artwork and the extra player screen and all of that. Did you get to play it? I did. I did get a chance to play the American version. Um, and, and, and what's neat is I got to play the European version at Dice Tower Con, so I have been yeah. able to compare the two. I, and, you know, oddly enough, I, <clears throat> the American version adds little voting tokens for voting yep. on how... I found that to be a little bit unnecessary. Almost like for the American version, they felt they needed to add a little more game to the game. Uh, and, you know, while I can appreciate that, I, I thought it, it you could take that out and play without that aspect of it, and it would still be just as strong of a game. Hmm. And maybe yeah, even stronger, because it's a little bit of a distraction. Yeah, it could be. I I thought the player screen, the way you could sort your mm. your cards when you were the ghost, uh, you know, giving the images was probably a really big plus. We had several people in our group when they put those tokens on there. If they disagreed, it's almost like they got offended. What do you mean? Well, what did I do wrong? Uh, why, why, why? No, we just don't think you're right, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I, I thought that that little bit of that game within the game was a little bit distracting from it, the core idea of the game. But I mean, it was still still amazing, still awesome, and still one that I'm 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 looking forward to be to playing. That's and awesome. Hey, Barry. Barry, we've gotten two out of the three already. Blood Rage! You've gotten two, not me. <sighs> I suck at this you game. Can get in on this. Okay, we part three. Yes. Here it is. Chaz, what is your favorite game? And you have to give us five one-word clues. We get mm -hmm. to guess after each one. You can try mm -hmm. to stump us. Oh, I'm going to try to, yes. All right, go for it, buddy. Okay. All right. Now, just one, 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 one little caveat here. It caveat, is really difficult, caveat. really difficult for me to choose my what favorite game. Caveat is it? Is it? What? What does caveat mean? I think it's a type of European car. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so is not that a wine you make? A caveat wine? Yes. So, uh, caveat blanc. It's actually a car, a okay. French car, <laughs> which is filled with wine. And it drives it itself. Yes. No, that's a Fiat. No, that isn't what it is. Did uh, I win uh, yet? <laughs> okay, are you ready for the first okay. word? Okay, yes. sorry, sorry, sorry. Give us your caveat. Oh, uh, the caveat is it's really difficult for me to choose a quote-unquote favorite game because it changes like every week. So this, this is the, my favorite game that I feel, you know, today. So it's not like I have a hardcore, you're always, you know, I don't have like a, a pandemic or a cosmic encounter or a Twilight Imperium. It, it fluctuates, you know, so just keep that in mind. So yeah, we need to change our notes to make sure that we put on there your favorite game at this moment in time instead of just your at favorite this, yes, game. Yes, okay. Okay, okay. okay. So in the effort to stump you guys, here are my five incredibly horrible <laughs> clues. My first word, amalgam. Amalgam. Oh crap! These are big words. Amalgam. Amalgam. What if you don't know what that word means? No, I advantage think me. I'm gonna say abyss. Ooh. What about Barry? Or what about uh, Kevin? I'll go with Abyss. That sounds good. Ah, see, I, see, if I had answered Barry, see, would have given you a, another guess. So this way I can tell you're both wrong at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Two at once. Zing, zing. Yeah, I should have said something else. Okay, word number two. My word number two is Abyss. No, <laughs> word number two is Variety. Hmm. No, variety. I'm going to look up amalgam on the dictionary on the internet. It's a variety amalgam. It's an amalgam rhythm. Amalgam. It's a variety of oh, amalgams. I spelled it correctly. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. I meant Verizon. No, no, it is variety. It is variety, okay. With <laughs> Verizon phones? Okay, so mixture <laughs> of blend. A com combination, a union, a merger, a blend, a mixture, a compound, a fusion, a mariage. Mariage is the French in here. Coming out. A variety of. Ah! I know well, one that is an amalgam. There's two words that mean the same thing. You've got uh, an amalgamation and you've got variety. So there's a variety of an amalgamation. Uh, no. Yeah, no synonym nim nims. You can't do synonym nim nims. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I didn't realize that rules could be introduced mid-game. Oh, it's my bad. You're you're on the Berkey and Badger board game babble show. Don't play with us. <laughs> we'll win. <laughs> Blood rage. Um, um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a guess. I'm I don't I don't really think this is what it is, but I'm gonna say smash up. All right. I'm That's a good say, guess, actually, for the clues that have been given. Elysium. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word! No, no, and no. Yeah, so, I knew it. It's all right. Did you ask two? Yeah, all tell right. Us, tell us more, Chaz. Tell us more. All right. Tell me more. The, the third word is discontinued. 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 
Is discontinued it, as they no longer make it, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Discontinued as in discontinued. You discontinued as in shows? not a synonym for amalgam. Oh, there not you go. Synonym, them, them. So it's not like they were on the shelf and they pulled them off and said, we're no longer selling you. Come on. I'm going to say, say it's from a thrift sift, so I'm going to say it's the Justin Bieber game. No, it ain't no stupid <laughs> Justin Bieber game. It might be The <laughs> Apprentice, but it's not Justin Bieber Dibber. Yeah, come on. Let's keep our priorities straight. You'll, oh. you'll fire. You'll fire. No, you fire. No, you fire. No, you fire. <laughs> Sorry, you fired. You fired. Okay. Oh man. Let's see if I can find Chaz on board Game Geek. <laughs> ah. Hmm. <laughs> user is a user like in Tron. Hmm. There he is. Okay, I'm okay. gonna take a wild guess. I'm gonna say, oh no, it's not discontinued anymore. <laughs> And my answer is no. Um. <laughs> Come on, Barry. Give me something here. I got to. Uh, okay, okay. Um, um, I'm going to give you. What the hell is that? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just looking at Chaz's game. Oh, you got some hero escape. Oh, 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 that's not fair. That's, oh, you, it, it, may, it might not be on there anyway. That, yeah. That's it might not be on there anyway. So go ahead. Look, 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 look. Go ahead. How, how yeah, many board games can there be? I mean, really? Yeah, precisely. Yeah, isn't it just... Uh you're tricksy, Barry. You're very tricksy. <laughs> <laughs> My precious. Come on, I I've guessed. I guessed the Justin Bieber. That was rubbish. Guess. Ah, uh, that's rubbish. I'm not saying that. I'm gonna say. Uh. I'm going to say something. Just let me say it, would you? You know, you keep interrupting me. There's two different Justin Bieber games, in case you want to grab the other one. For your yeah. guess. Justin Bieber. Just stop it. It's a game that's really good, because you wouldn't like an, a bad game, or you'd get kicked out of this industry. You wouldn't be who you are today if you had some crappy game that you think is good. But that's, that's what he does. That's what he does. He does videos about crappy games, and he's very popular. No, very funny about yeah, it. There you go. yeah, but they hate that stuff. They like his. He likes it. Their real stuff. See, you know how it goes. Hmm. Ah! Come on, Kevin. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'm just gonna I'll, say I'll go it. To Age of Empires three. No, and no. Okay. I. I would just like to re, uh, re remind, remind the panel that one of us who had to draw had a 30 seconds time limit. Okay, so I just want to throw that back out there for the last. What two is clues. he saying, Barry? I, I can hear him. I think we just put a connection. time limit on this game. Yeah. Okay. I let's agree go. With you. <laughs> All right. Oh, Numero four. So. Uh, I was, see, I was thinking to make it a little more interesting. I was going to give you the last two clues, not in English, but no, I, I won't do that. So, clue number four, <laughs> reintroduced. Yeah, I know what it is. Reintroduced. Go Game of Thrones, the collectible, not collectible card game, the the living card game. Okay. Now, just bonus. For you guys, that was reintroduced to the question mark at the end. I feel like, to be fair, it needed a question mark. Look, okay, uh, I, I'm gonna say mark. I'm gonna say Doomtown Reloaded. Oh, good question, a good one. Okay, it is not Game of Thrones, and Doomtown Reloaded is also wrong. No! All right, oh. make it stop. <laughs> Number five. Number five is. Plastic. Plastic. Reintroduced. Plastic. Plastic. It's, it's that Barbie Monopoly game. Oh, la, 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 la. <laughs> I'm a Barbie girl <laughs> in a Barbie world. Like so pretty. It's a They're by Ken doll. Oh, la, 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 la. I haven't got a clue. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. I'm going to go. Ah, I'm going to go. Interesting. 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 
I got a feeling that's what it is. It's uh, see that. it's HeroScape. It's got to be. HeroScape. So what game? Okay, what game could combine an amalgam of things, a variety of things that's discontinued but possibly reintroduced in a way and has lots and lots of plastic? Yes, it's HeroScape. Yeah, because it's a What rage! We wiped out our opponent there, Kevin. <laughs> Way to go, uh, Barry. I knew I should have just started making work. stuff up. You did good was for good. us, Chaz. Well, I agree with you. The show's probably getting a little long here, but let's just uh, let's just uh, wrap it up with just a couple of ideas. Thanks for doing the show with us, Jazz. That's really fun with the, the questions and the game show, I mean. Um, but let's wrap it up and talk a little bit about our Gen Con experiences. And uh, just wanted to kind of get your overall impression of what you thought of Gen Con. Gen Con was an absolutely amazing experience. I'm so glad that I took hold of the opportunity and went to it this year. Uh, it was fantastic. It was exhausting. And I would do it again in a heartbeat. Ah, that's awesome. How did you feel when you got home? Did you need a couple days to recuperate? <laughs> yeah. I got home about... 2.30 in the afternoon, I was asleep by 3.30, and the next day, almost the same thing. <laughs> wow. I think, Barry, you have a couple of online questions that people wanted to ask us about, Gen Con, both Chaz and myself. Yep, I've got a question from Paxton73, who asked, uh, did any of you get a chance to play Champions of Midgar at Gen Con? Chaz, did you get to play that? I didn't. Um, I did see it um, being uh, being demoed and talked about. Uh, I, I barely. I think I got to play three things. Um, I was on the go almost continuously the entire time, um, so I got to play very little. I was, you know, doing the tweeting and the video and stuff. But did did you get a chance to play it? I didn't get a chance to play it at Gen Con, and I actually wanted to play it at Dice Tower Con, and actually it was busy when 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 it was being demoed. <laughs> we we were doing other things too, and. Um, but I saw a portion of some other people playing the game, and everything that I saw was fantastic. I, mm -hmm. I really wanted to play that. Um, I like you, Chaz. I, means we had the Sheriff of Nottingham thing. I, I learned one thing about Gen Con. Gen Con, it says the best four days in gaming. You know what I called it? The best four days in watching games being played and not getting <laughs> to play them. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, so, we were just we were so blitzed. The first two days, I played one game because mm -hmm. we were doing so many things. So just like you, and and then finally the last day we kind of settled in. But to answer the question, I didn't get to see it, uh, but I do know or I didn't get to play it. But I did see others really. They jumped on this game. It was one of the games I wanted to get. Tom Vassell uh, from the Dice Tower Network. He's going Coco for Cuckoo Puffs and. Cuckoo for Coco. He's doing something breakfasty about it, and uh, he really likes it. <laughs> so you went to Gen Can, but actually you were at Gen Can't. Because you were. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you got another question, no, Barry? Uh, yeah, uh, another game. Did you guys get to play the Firefly expan expansion, Caldasia? I have. I haven't played it. No, I I, uh, I haven't even played the base game for of, of Firefly. Um, I I want to, but I have when I've had the opportunity, I've invested my time in Zaya instead, uh, just because it has a little bit more of a sandbox feel to it. So I I, I haven't played the base game or the expansion for for Firefly. Mm. I didn't get to play the expansion for Firefly, but we did get something very special. Uh, I got a copy of Firefly Shiny Dice by my friend Scott Morris, who designed the game. You got see, I that was on my list. That was on my short list. The Firefly ah! Shiny Dice. I couldn't get a copy of that because literally all day, 
every day, the line around that booth went all the way around all the booth. All the way around it. And it's like, I, I, can't, I didn't have the opportunity to stand in line for an hour. And I kept going by the booth, but con- consistently uh, there was just a line. And so uh, I'm, I'm hoping to nab a copy of it in the near future. But wow, that was, that, everything in that booth was in demand. No, that was a crazy booth, and that's by the Upper Deck uh, Mm -hmm. uh, group. And it was on the fourth day that we had finally settled down to where we were actually going to be able to go demo some games. And my daughter and I were on a beeline to head over to the Mayfair uh, game booth area because we wanted to demo a five-year mission, uh, the new Mm -hmm. Star Trek game. Mm -hmm. And, And right away I went, oh, I haven't picked up Firefly Shiny Dice. I didn't know if they had sold out or not. And so I said, Maddie, I'll be right back. And I headed right over there, and I got in line, and I was only about 15 deep. And I actually ended up getting a copy for me and another friend and uh, got the copy signed by Scott Morris Talks. Like, so it's all signed cool with, with this really cool <laughs> marker, too. You know, not a black blue marker like your marker. I mean, it was a really cool marker. It's like gold. And, uh, and then that night had a buddy of mine uh, in the board game group. I don't know if any of you guys do Facebook, but there's a group called the board game group. Larry Cruz and Lyndon Martin and uh, Brian Wilkett and a lot of these guys uh, just do a fantastic, it's such a fun board game group on Facebook, a lot of forums. But anyway, uh, one of my buddies from Costa Rica, his name is Daniel Solis, was there. And uh, we got together because we've been Facebooking for about a year. And that night we played Firefly Shiny Dice, and uh, that was just you get these little placemats, and uh, they look like mouse pads, a little bigger, but you actually big honking dice, and you actually feel like you're playing Firefly when you when you get Badger, or, you know, or uh, uh, what's the other guy's name? Uh, uh, Jane. Just, just, yeah, yeah, Jane. She's on the she's on the crew side, but uh, the the three villains. Uh, yeah, it's Badger. I'm just drawing a blank. The one that represents the lips is a Solos. Solos. Um, and what's the other one? Han Solo. Han Solo. No, that. Anyway, whatever. Um, we we'll, we played it once, but I really felt like we were in the game. And and when Badger, uh, you rolled the little bolo hats. Badger came up, and you kind of felt like it. And it was a really nice little dice mechanism. It kind of reminded me of Marvel Dice Masters, actually. Hmm. Um, so that was kind of interesting. And I uh, got to talk to Scott about his game too. I was really happy for him to be able to produce a game like that and get some exposure. Uh, he's such a great yeah. guy. Yeah. 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 Can I ask you? You had you told us lots of stories of games that you went wanted to get but was always sold out. Was there anything that you did get that wasn't sold out? I was able to grab a copy of... Oh, the, the number one game on my list was Viceroy. I was able to get a copy of that. Oh. Um, I got uh, this little game called Crab Stack, uh, primarily to play with my daughter, who's eight and a half. Um, and while I was getting Crab Stack... Um, I they had Battle Sheep right next to it, which I've played and enjoyed, so I may have grabbed that as well. And um, I also got the uh, the expansion for the Exodus Proxima Century, the um, ah, Age, Age, of, Age Extinction. of Extinction. Yeah. Oh my word! I just want to talk about yes. that. Now, the the expansion comes in a box that is the same size as the base game, but yeah. this expansion, I swear, it. They handed it to me, and I almost, like, dropped it because it is, I swear, it's got to be even heavier than the base uh, game. This thing is crammed with so much stuff. Uh, did you see box. it set up? Did you see no, it set up yeah, on just, the booth? Yeah, and I was just like, oh, wow. And, you know, I've heard it adds, like, player powers and it you know, makes things more asymmetrical. Yes. Oh, so and so I, I was thinking, you know, little expansion with like some cards, you know. No, no, but this no. thing is a game in and of itself, and the heft of this box. I was I'm so excited to to play it and integrate that because there's so much more in that box than I was expecting. It's so, amazing. Um, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. So th- those are the main those are the main things. Um, See, I picked up a couple of little things also from the the Passport uh, Pocket Imperium in Warehouse 51, um, okay, yep, yep. which 
which were kind of impulse buys because I was there and I was so giddy from Exodus. It's like, give me that too! And um, <laughs> also a little... Oh, was that... I believe it was... The, um, um, oh, no, the other the other thing was just some extra stuff for Viceroy. Player mat and little gems and stuff, but just the, the, the throw in with Viceroy. You know, going that... F- traveled that far to get it, I might as well get all the special stuff they have for it. So... Um, so yeah, that, that was the, the main things on on my list. Yeah, I was really impressed with uh, Passport's lineup of games, and I likewise yes. you saw all those little Age of Extinction. All the, the ships are on little standees now, and I mean it's just phenomenal. And like you said, some of these other games that they're doing, they've got a new game coming out uh, that's going to be like a minor Forty Nine er game, Gold Rush uh, oh. type of game. Yeah, it's going to be kickstarted, and the guy was telling me a little bit about it, and really excited about that too. I just like. Uh, this company, that the booth was way at the back, but they had a deal going on, and this is kind of an up and coming company, I think. Mhm, mhm. Yeah, I was really impressed with the library of games they had there at the convention. There was really a lot of variety to them too. So, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I uh, the oh, oh oh and 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 Dark Moon. I, I got a copy of Dark Moon, which I have been waiting for ever since I heard it was announced like last year or the year before uh, as soon as I heard BSG Express was going to be redone as Dark Moon I have been waiting for that one so that was the other one okay so yeah we had a we had a game night oh go ahead Barry so it was the Battlestar Galactica Express which sold the game to you it wasn't the fact that it was stronghold games or because it was space or anything it was the fact that it was a you knew about the Battlestar Galactica Express uh, yeah, um, it was because uh, the way I heard it described was, you know, kind of this combination of, you know, streamlined Battlestar Galactica and also kind of reminiscent of the old movie from the 80s, The Thing, where you're kind of trapped in this space station and, you know, people are getting infected. Sounds like a really nice twist on the social deduction and paranoia type of aspect, you know, and I, I love a game where you can you can get in and start to really get you know some paranoia and suspicion of the other players going, and you know kind of eventually reveal and double cross you know someone. So yeah, when then when I heard that they were redoing it, you know, and so the production quality is really nice, and you know they rethemed it and they they kind of you know tweaked it out a little bit. Uh, I was really that was just pushed it over the edge for me. It's like you know that was one of the first ones I went and looked for. So. Yeah, I think that, that's the thing that sold it to me is that, that kind of thing, the feeling that you get. You're, you're abandoned and you're trying to get things going and um, there's someone there who's not trying to get things going. And uh, Yeah, that, yeah. That's really sold it for me. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. So, Chaz, uh, tell me, uh, give me a little idea of what some of your favorite moments were at Gen Con. Some of my my favorite moments uh, were uh, meeting you. Uh, <laughs> of course. I thought he was going to say, I'm so really glad you got to see me. <laughs> uh, you kept telling me that, too. I know. I know. I tell everyone that. <laughs> uh, well, I think uh, my favorite moments, I was, uh, I have a little bit uh, just from like 15 years or so ago. Um, I, I would self-publish a uh, small press comic book regionally in, in Oregon and, and Washington a little bit. So I went to some of the conventions and, you know, Eugene, Portland, and Seattle and stuff when I was doing that. And there was always this, not really a social barrier, but trying to approach a publisher or approach someone there to show them your comic, especially with comics being such a visual medium, you know, you make this instant judgment of things. It was very difficult, it seemed, to break through that barrier and actually get someone's attention. And these were not even huge cons. These were small. You know, never mind 60,000 people walking around. But one of the things that I was most impressed about at Gen Con was it seemed like there was very little barrier there, you know. There, uh, I was able to go up, and you know, when I was getting uh, Dark Moon and um, some other stuff at the Stronghold booth, you know, I was buying it from Stephen Bonacor, who was right there working the booth, talking to people, you know, and you know, we, we, yeah, we talked about a few things, and and you know, you just you never 
I never experienced that. It was almost a foreign thing. You know, everyone there, the Z-Man booth, it was the same experience. Um, you know, I was actually doing some stuff with another gentleman from the Dice Tower, and we were talking to Zev at the Z-Man booth. Just walked right up, hey, how you doing, and everything. And uh, just everyone there that's, you know, quote-unquote, in the industry was right there on the floor talking to people, demoing, having this you know, pride and... Uh, excitement about the products that they had created and weren't yeah. like there, you know, just signing autographs like, oh yes, you know, go through the line. They were there engaging with people, and Absolutely. it was, it was such a 180 from the other experiences I've had. You know, and the convention was so much bigger. It was just that to me was one of the most amazing and fascinating things that made me really proud to have some sort of minuscule little contribution to this community, to the board game industry. Uh, just to be a part of it because it was that that just the people in it just made it seem so special and huge convention, but they made it seem so small and personal on that level. Yeah, yeah I yeah. I'd agree. I would agree as well. I, yeah, I totally concur. I you know I sat and talked talked with Yuva uh, Eichert from Academy Games for a long time. Talked to the folks at Passport. Talked to Ben Hilliard and. And the people that I did connect with that were more, more, you know, in the business, so to speak, uh, they're just normal folks like the rest of us, and uh, they they really do care about their hobby. They care about the passion for what they're doing, and and you know, I you know, obviously people are trying to improve themselves, and I think that's fine, but I get a sense in this community that people actually care about you as a person. You can see that that interaction that. Uh, I had several people come up to me, you know, we're nobody, you know, we just started board game theater a while ago, and we're not well known at all, and yet people had heard of me, and they, 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 had, they saw the costume, and they were appreciative of what, what was going on, and uh, that's just so special, I think, and that's what makes this hobby so great, and uh, I'm so glad to be a part of it, just like you, that we get this opportunity just to connect with people, and for me, too, the fans, you know. <laughs> We were just horsing around at the Sheriff of Nottingham game at Arcane Wonders and just interacting with people, and people were taking pictures with us, and, and they were so happy to just to have that experience. And little kids would come up, and we'd take pictures with the kids, and, and you know these little kids would just go away with these huge smiles on their face, and it was like, this is what this is about, you know? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, to, for being... What, what Barry? I I haven't been to Gen Con, uh, but I have been to Essen um, way before I was anybody, and um, I can relate to that experience. I remember walking around the aisles and looking at everything and going, well, that looks nice, that looks nice. And then there'd be someone that you recognize, and I, I'd never noticed it at first. I, I was just like walking past the, uh, I can't remember what booth it was. Yeah, I think it was Stronghold. I was walking past the Stronghold booth, and I go, Oh, it's Jeff Engelstein. And I must have said it out loud because his ears pricked and he looked at me. And he said, hello. And he's like, <laughs> what? And, you know, and we're like about 10 meters apart. And he, he's looking at me and he said hello to me. And I'm like, hello. And I started talking to him and we, we, we talked about his game and uh, his podcast. And and then that happened several other times during the day. And it was like uh, there was a this really tall guy in, a, in an American football top. And I said, oh, my God, this is Eric Mine. And I must have said it out loud because he turned around and he looked at me. And we started talking about time stories. And, oh, and I, I, you know, the thing I was dreading is when I saw Vladimir Shivatel. Yeah, that, ah. I, hope, I, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Because if I said his name out loud and he came over to me and started talking to me, my wife would have pounced in one because she hates Galaxy Truckers. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so, um, My yeah, rage! It is, yeah, yeah, Galaxy Truck Rage! Um, it is a, a fantastic environment. There, there are people there. If you just go and talk to them, or even if you just like say their name out in your head, but you think you're saying it in your head, but it's actually out loud, they will come over and talk to you, and you will have it just brings such an experience to to the, to the whole event. And um, I can't wait to go again. So tell me, Chaz, have you uh, have you been to Origins? No, I haven't. Um, I'm I'm actually getting it on my radar for next year, you know, if possible. I'm, I'm t taking this year to feel out. You know, the, the, uh, this is the first year I've gone to Gen Con. You know, and. Sure. 
Um, I was able to go to Dice Tower Con earlier this year because we did it like a family vacation down to Orlando. So these, these did you know this is the first year I've actually traveled outside the state to to go to conventions, and so I'm kind of finding out what's my speed. And I think right. Origins, you know, definitely I think from what I hear is is a little more my speed too. You know, than it's not as much of a carnival as as Gen Con. Have you but, been um, to uh, BGG Con? No, I haven't, but I am booked and registered and can't wait to go. So I'm going to. We're going to hook up and we're going to play some games, buddy. Yep. The, Gen Con was basically... <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> it was sad. It was depressing. I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> That's very... Uh, well, but yeah, I, only f- the reason... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, just four short months until Barry misses BGG Con. Ah, oh, Barry. Barry, we're going to send you pictures, Barry. Yeah, that won't make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, the reason I asked the question about Origins, Gen Con, Dice Tower Con, BGG Con, different sites. I've been to BGG Con, I've been to Dice Tower Con, I've been to Gen Con three times. And I was interested to what your thoughts are about what your favorite con might be, or what what you really where where you think you fit. That that's a really good question. You know, it's really difficult. You know, and again, you know, my I've only gone to a, a few of you know the official industry conventions at this point, but I think you can't really compare apples to apples. Like mm-hmm. if I go back to Gen Con. I want to go back to Gen Con to work. You know, I want yeah. to go there with getting video, getting you know stuff like that, and talking to people. BGG Con, I want to go there to relax and hang out with all of my you know online buddies and other people I've met through social media and relax yeah. and play. So yeah. I, I yeah, and Origins I see as a combination of of the two. So yeah, yeah it's really I, to me they're apples to oranges. You know, different objectives for each one. At least for me, they would be. Well, it's kind of kind of where I was coming from too. You know, my daughter Maddie and I uh, were doing a lot of lot of work with Arcane Wonders with the Sheriff of Nottingham game and, and the cosplay event, and um, it was exhausting. Like you said, you know, you're running around. It was good to have things to do, but the last two times I was at Gen Con, the con was a little bit smaller uh, than it was this year. This year, sixty one thousand four hundred and twenty three or so. They said. Um, it felt like 70,000 this year to me. Last year was 56,000, and it was crowded. The year before, I think it was like 48,000, and that felt pretty good. But everywhere we went at Gen Con, when we did have free time, we had a hard time getting to a table to even play anything. And it seemed like we are always bumping into someone, and I, I made this comment to Maddie. I said, you know... I said, when we leave the convention, that's when we can go play games. We couldn't Mm -hmm. get into the game room. I mean, the convention's growing by 9% a year, and that game room has not expanded. Uh, The game library, uh, there was lines, you know, for an hour to get into the thing, and even if you had tickets. I mean, so it was kind of a strange thing. So you had to play games outside, but there was some wonderful companies, you know, like Rio Grande Games, Stonemaier Games had a really great uh, game uh, room set up over at the uh, Marriott Hotel where you could play Tuscany. We've actually played Between Two Cities there. <laughs> that That is a cool game. Um, but, you know, at the con, we were so busy doing stuff, we just didn't feel like we could play games and we were just running into people. And I said to Maddie, I just said, you know, there's two things. You come to this convention because you're doing it because you have maybe some business reasons to do it and you focus on that. So if you're in the industry and trying to connect and network, just do that and enjoy that. Um, If you are coming for entertainment and for pleasure, then just do that. But don't try to do both because you just Mm -hmm. can't do it all. I agree. I totally agree with that. Yeah, we were just... uh, I mean, we enjoyed Gen Con, but it, it was a little overwhelming, and it was the most tiring convention I've ever been to. And we actually all got con cred coming home, too, so. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, I, I checked my little pedometer thing, and I think I must have walked at at least 48 miles or something over the course of the four days. It yeah, was no, insane. I, well, and, you know, at Dice Tower Con, it was such a homey, 
small atmosphere that you just got to play games with people all day long and and when you went away you felt like you really you really played games and it was a real enjoyable relaxing and I found that at BGG Con even though I helped with the sheriff of Nottingham last year at BGG Con I had a lot of opportunity to meet people and this year I know a whole bunch more people so I'm really excited about about all of that okay quick question I want to ask did any of you lose weight at a convention or put or did you put on weight <laughs> <laughs> tell us, Jazz. Tell us, Jazz. I I was I I was going to weigh myself before and after, but I I I I have to I have to say I, I lost weight. I mean that's I, all I did was walk. No, actually, swing. when I got home, it wasn't until it wasn't until yeah, I was I was on the plane on the way home, and I realized that that was the first time that I sat down in four days. I was walking or flat out asleep, but that's all. It was just walking, standing, no sitting for four days, and so I'm I'm sure I, I'm sure I lost a lot of weight. Um, the zoo alone, sweating out, you know, all that water uh, because oh, yeah. it was. Apparently, the zoo is held on the surface of the sun. I didn't I wasn't realizing. <laughs> it's on Mars. Yeah. And you, Kevin, in your costume, did you did you uh, lose a bit? Well, I got to tell you, our costume—they're—they're—they've got white trim on the front of the costume, matching the artwork from Sheriff of Nottingham. It's not but white I was anymore, sweating. Though, is it? <laughs> it the the red fabric bled into the white trim, and now it's pink. It looked like I actually was bleeding, you know. And I just—I'm too fat for that kind of heat, you know. And that costume is heavy. And so, likewise, uh, um, so I actually felt like when we came home, we had lost weight. Okay, that's good news. I can't wait for my my next convention. I'm going to lose some weight because it's just not to... Anyway, I, I, we better wrap things up because uh, the yeah. hour is getting on. I have to wake up the family because it's time to do things like breakfast. And... <laughs> so I'd like yeah, to why say don't we... Big... Uh... Go ahead. Big thank you. To... Thank you. Someone here. Who is a very special guest, Mr. Chaz Marla from Paradise Paradise. Thank you, Chaz. Thank you, Chaz. Chaz, I just got one word for you. I have two words for you. Blood rage! <laughs> no, actually, Chaz, uh, is there anything you want to say about what you're doing, uh, you know, with Team Vest or with your, your channel or anything like that? I'd like to give you an opportunity if there's uh, something you want to, to let us know about. Oh, thank you. Um, now the main thing is, you know, the the YouTube channel is youtubecom slash pair of dice paradise, and that's also the the website is www.pairofdiceparadise.com, and on Twitter, dice paradise, which I forgot to put in my little lower third. Uh, didn't realize that till the end, so I haven't yeah, been advertising yeah. myself the whole time. But no, the 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 main thing is that um, it's at Gen Con. I actually met a couple of people who were familiar with the the channel and the the website, which was amazing. Blew my mind. Um, that alone, out of out of sixty thousand other people, you know, there's a couple that that recognized me from it. So it's just been a privilege to you know be doing the the show and the channel and everything. And I hope to be able to continue doing it for the foreseeable future. So thanks to everyone. Hmm. You've been doing a great job on the board board game breakfast segments with the Dice Tower, and I didn't know that you had such a wonderful singing voice. <laughs> you know, that that little performance didn't demonstrate it. <laughs> I rehearsed, I rehearsed that bloody song for like you know. <laughs> every hour on the hour for a week beforehand and then I got up there and I was just off key the entire song and it was just like oh man so in what your mind <laughs> what we're referring to is the Dice Tower live show and Chaz had a song and you were singing it with uh, with Z, with Z. Right? yes it was based on it was a parody of A Whole New World from Aladdin and yeah that that play song you know when, you, when you're you're doing something and as you are performing it, you're like, 
oh, just let me edit undo and go back, and I can do this so much better. <laughs> but then it's gone, and uh, yeah. Well, it was fun. It was fun watching you, and uh, uh, you're very much loved in the community. I I know that the reason you're you're your popularity is what it is. Is just because people enjoy who you are and your your segment. You know, you're very real and you're very honest with your your with what's going on. Your segment. You know, what's it? Meeple sheeples for meeples peoples or what is the sheeples? Meeples for sheepish peoples. Sheepish people meeples. Yeah. Anyway, it talks about how meeples are very yeah, and and these meeples are very sheepish, and you're like a sheepish person. That's right. it exactly. Yes, <laughs> that, that was uh, the, the the people that came up and talked to me at Gen Con. Um, almost all of them came up because of that series, and they mentioned yeah. it. And that series is so personal and special to me. It, it was it, it was really special having you know making that connection with people and anyone who tells me you know that that has had an effect on them. Um, you know, it's because the, it's just really special. Um, <laughs> and it's a little hard to talk about sometimes, apparently. But uh, yeah, that that was really neat. Just actually seeing some people that had connected through through that series and had a chance to mention that um, you know it had changed their perspective on things. So well, was... I think it I I think it really strikes a chord with people, and you you are you know reaching out to people that maybe struggle with some of that, and that it really I don't have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I suspected, but I wasn't positive. <laughs> but but I get it, and and I I just think it's fantastic because you're there. People can relate to you, and and they don't have to feel like they're alone. And I think that's incredibly important. So uh, well done, really really great job. And you're funny, man. You, you crack me up. I love your stuff. Just love it. Well, thank you very much. I. You're starting to sound like me when I talk to myself about myself, you know. So uh, you're gonna you're gonna make my ego a little more inflated. And trust me, I when I get off this, I'll go do my reaffirmation and uh, I'll I'll stroke my own ego. So, so don't worry about me. Good enough. I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. And doggone it, people like me. <laughs> exactly. Oh. And next year. You but yeah, thank you for having me on too. Yeah, pleasure. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Well, Barry, I suppose you ought to send us home. Hey, I'm going to send us home, but before I do, I just need to say quickly, this is the last video of Bertie Badger I'm going to post on my channel. And it's now going to move on to the actual Berkey and Badger board game Babble YouTube site. So look for us there in future, um, and hopefully we'll have um, some videos at a reasonable hour. <laughs> for some of us, um, we got, uh, we got a lot of guests lined up. I've got about three lined up. I don't know how many Kevin's got lined up. He's probably got an armful. But um, we have guests all over the world lined up to chat with us, and um, we'll ask him some questions. And hopefully, we'll we'll get these questions. <laughs> we get, we'll win, like today. Woo <laughs> Blood rage! Blood rage! So that's all for us. Thanks Is there anything you want to add, Kevin? No, just thanks for watching, guys. I know sometimes with the technology we have some issues, and we're going to do our best to work them out and actually do some audio recording so we can increase uh, the, the quality of what we're doing. But the bottom line is we just love talking about board games and are really enjoying this hobby, and thanks for watching and putting up with us. <laughs> Thank you, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to play us out of here because I need to go to the little boys' room. <laughs> I'll see you later, guys. We're so glad we had this time together. And now it's time to go. It won't be long until we have...